Don't forget, today we are online. You guys, folks watching online, t spread the word. Tell your friends. Uh, Facebook your friends right now. Uh, send them a tweet. Text message. Let them know you can watch the Chair of Ironman. What's up, Shumper.com and RealCountry1390.com. Speaking of RealCountry1390, we're uh, live on the air in Shelby Town today. Yes, we are. W-O-H-S. Iron Man. W-O-H-S. <laughs> Yeah, I did that last week. Yeah, I've already look. It, it only took me two minutes today to do a post 100. David's David's got a post-it note now on the window to remind Ironman. him that it's the Ironman and not the uh, post 100. By the seventh <laughs> inning, I'll have it down. Pickoff yeah. move back to second yeah. base easily in. I throw down to second, yeah, and the runner back in there easily. Throw to the first base side of the bag. Yeah, it's so easy for me to do. Calling so many post 100 games throughout the years. Dylan Harris on the mound today. He's been on the mound quite a lot early on here for the Ironman. Ironman 0 and 5. This pitch down and away. And the count one ball, one strike. Dustin Green, the shortstop for the Burns Bulldogs. David Wise, as we said, got his first victory a couple of days ago against a rival, the Crest Chargers, 2-1 to one win. They've been in other games, David. They lost 3-2 mm -hmm. to two against Crest, and they lost 4-1 to one at Kings Mountain. So it's not like they've been getting blown out of the and they only needed one strike to close out a win against Crest that first game. They were up two to one, oh. and a double beat them after with two outs and two strikes wow. in the seventh. So they just about swept Crest. Speaking of bat down the last batter, the uh, Ironman the other night, one out away from getting no hit by Cameron High, Wes Lincoln, as a High gave up a base hit, and aside from two walks, he was perfect. And that hit, he was perfect uh, Friday wow. night. Wow. Yeah, I read a little piece about that game. That pitch misses. Two balls, two strikes here to Dustin Green. We're just underway. Fraley Field in Cherville. The sun is out right now. The good Come news The good news for uh, Cherville, though, is high pitches for post 100, don't he? He does. <laughs> don't get me saying post 100. <laughs> <laughs> See if I can get you confused. <laughs> this one upstairs, ball three. Now the count goes full to Dustin Green. It should help me that I, I should not mess up with Burns Bulldogs. That should be a <laughs> simple one today. The Ironmen have struggled early on with their bats. Uh, we were there for the one game against Crest where they put up three runs in the first, three runs in the second, me and Dad. And uh, since then, and the games before then, Ironmen have been nothing on the board. Strike three, swinging. Swing miss, yeah. Dustin Green swings and miss. Dylan Harris gets his first strike out of the day, first out recorded of the day. Now there's one down. Richard still the runner down at second base, but now an out in the books, and it'll bring up the catcher, Brandon Alexander. Not too many times, David, you can look at a uh, Cherville baseball standings and see them in dead last. Southern yeah. Piedmont 1A, 2A. Well, it's early. It's early. It's early, and, and they have did get off to a kind of a slow start last year, but 0-5, I know the uh, assistant coach, uh, A.J. Henley, told me that he thought they played their best game, their best outing was against Randleman, who's the defending 2A champs up at Crawford's right. Park. Lost 5-2 or 5-3, I think, in that one. So. I can find that real quick. And he said that, <laughs> and that was the day after they really had a poor performance against North Gaston, which you and I saw. Right, five two. Five um, two. And then, that, well, the the one hitter Friday night is the second time they've been one hit this it year. Sure they only is. gave up. One, they only got one hit against the uh, Wildcats up in North Gaston, and uh, the Ironmen not finding the way to put the bats on the ball. And from my standpoint, I think they're not taking enough to right field as they should. Getting a lot of curve balls, a lot of chopping, a lot of breaking balls, and off suit pitches into the dirt. And the best thing, best thing to hit those is to stay back, plant that foot, and get a right field with it, and uh, not really executing at the plate. They have struggled. As you said, the one hit at North Gaston, it was even an infield hit. Right. It was a chopper. That sh I mean, it should have been played. We, they, we, we debated whether they would give him a hit or an error in the press box. Ended up giving him the hit, taking away the no-no. Here it is. One ball and one strike. Brandon Alexander, the catcher for the Burns Bulldogs, the number three hitter in this lineup. I am getting text from Scott Harrell as we speak. We'll have to talk about that a little bit. He's throwing some some numbers out there for me. Former Cherville uh, High School and yeah. Legion players that had big weekends. And Is we'll that the number those. that we didn't know? I got a text from a number I don't know. Just a second ago, said, turn your mic up. <laughs> now, I knew this one. <laughs> the, the number I got that I didn't know was area code 910. That's the that's from the text. That's the really? same text, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> whoever just sent me that text. Identify uh, yourself. Identify yourself. Me and David uh, your name. sitting in the uh, press we appreciate box. Appreciate you listening, right? 
Three balls, one strike. The count here to Brandon Alexander. Running at second gets his lead. The pitch is upstairs, ball four. So a one-out walk here to Alexander sends him down to first base. Richards, a runner at second. Two runners aboard, one out for the cleanup hitter, third baseman, Phillip Black. Ironman would love to get a double play ball right here. You're exactly right. Folks on the radio, I know you guys can't can't see the jerseys, but you can hear on the uh, whatsupshopper.com. Burns dressed out in their navy blue and gold. With no Carolina blue on their jerseys today. I guess they're more than yesterday's loss. But uh, the Burns with no Carolina, they're hardly recognizable. Here's Pop one up. lifted infield first fly. pitch. Yeah, infield fly row in effect. Second baseman, however, camps under it. And the catch is made by Zach McNeely for the second out, and the runners will stay put. So a big out there for Dylan Harris and the Cherville Ironman. The runners stay put. Now it take a two-out hit by Josh Bean, the center fielder, to try and push the runs across here. Bean, the pitcher, I think, that uh, did the good job against Crest on Friday, hold, beating them two to one, who also, Kevin, will be a Cherville Post 100 participant here in a couple months. Who's that? Uh, Josh Beam at the plate oh, okay. right now for the Burns Bulldogs. While there's a timeout, I'll go ahead and let you know, Scott Harrell, I do appreciate you listening today, uh, Coach Harrell, and, and uh, for sending me the information. Great weekend for charitable sports, he says. Thomas Best, Thomas Best, former player here, basketball, football, and baseball, led UNC Asheville in hitting and leads them in average stolen base and on-base percentage. Drew Reynolds, we know what he did over the weekend. Remarkable weekend for East Carolina, going 7 for 11 wow. in a tournament that they won by beating ranked 14th-ranked Louisville mm -hmm. yesterday. And uh, Reynolds was 7 for 11 and also hit a home run yesterday in that championship. And then what can you say about Terry Wisnett, uh, the former charitable basketball player who was a member of the Florida State team that just won the ACC tournament. So. Congratulations, Terry. Saw him on TV a couple times yesterday. And both Wisnett and Bess's team are headed to the NCAA tournament. That's Bess right. Bess is red-shirted by UNC Asheville. They could face each other in the Final Four. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Wouldn't that be something? Yes, it would. Here's one. I'd be some bracket busters right <laughs> yes, there. Yes, it would. Beam fouls it back out of play. The count one and one here to the left-handed hitting center fielder. Steve Roberts at WHS. Thank you, Steve. He's our, he's our okay. man back at the studio. Is <laughs> he the 910 Yeah, that, that's the nine. <laughs> he's from Durham. Okay. Well, he's a good man. Well, not necessarily. I think he's a Tar Heel fan. Well, he's a bad man. No, I don't. I can't remember, I can't remember who you pulled for, Steve. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. It's got to be Duke. I think it's Duke. You seem like a dookie. <laughs> Two outs, two balls, one strikes, 0-0 zero, zero in the top of the first inning. Here's a 2-1, swing and a miss now, and then the evens account, Josh Beam, 2-2. Two and two. Facing Dylan Harris, runners at first and second. No score, Cherville Burns, a non-conference game here. From what we understand, the last of the 4.30 starts, at least for a while. scheduled. <laughs> you know, we may run into one if we see weather's going to be cold. But I can't imagine it's getting cold. It hasn't been cold since 2000. <laughs> since 2010, yeah. <laughs> we got a balk. Yes, we do. We got a balk called on the pitcher on the mound, and both runners will advance. Alexander down to second. Umpire's pointing at, the, pointing at his shoulders. Yeah, he probably shrugged his shoulders. Went through the. And once one of those are called, David, be right. ready for the balk yeah. fest. Look like a uh, simulated. It doesn't matter.